I want to get reaction to everything you just said and more. Uh, Dinesh D'Souza, thank you for joining us tonight. My pleasure. Matthew Continetti, editor-in-chief of the Washington Free Beacon, and Nomiki Konst, uh, host of The Filter on Sirius XM uh, Progress. I I'll start with you first, Nomiki. What did you make of, of, D of Dinesh comments just now? I mean, that's some curious logic that he's using about Hillary Clinton. I think there are several cases over the 35, 40-year history of Donald Trump, all the way going back to when he was trying to open up a casino in Bridgeport, Connecticut, and he called, he said that the Indians don't look like Indians, so they shouldn't be justified with their Native American uh, exemptions from taxes, uh, all the way back to when he was being sued for his uh, for not renting to African Americans. He's had racial discrimination lawsuits against him. This is a man with 40 years of history against minority groups. It's not just about David Duke. Right, it's Matthew, about that he is, is, is no Mickey's argument fair. Well, I think it is fair when you, when you look at Donald Trump's history and some of the rhetoric he's used on the campaign. But I don't think that's really what's going on here. I think. Both candidates are trying to kind of solidify their bases. And Donald Trump's minority outreach is actually about trying to maintain hold of the Republican Party, which is made up of a lot of white voters. And what we're seeing in the polls right now is white voters with college degrees are really running away from Donald Trump precisely because of this issue of race and prejudice. And so I think a lot of Trump's minority outreach is to get those voters back in the fold. That's why Clinton is doubling down. But Matthew, what do, you, what do you make this week of this very direct appeal that he has made to African-American voters saying, what do you have to lose? Essentially painting a picture of, are you happy now? Are you better off now than you were eight years ago? Do you want more of the same? Well, there's, the, the, saying what do you have to lose is a little bit different from saying are you better off now than you were eight years ago. And I think many African Americans, when you look at the reporting, you look at the reactions, found uh, the comment patronizing. I mean, there's one thing to say, well, my policies are going to help minorities more than, say, the Democratic uh, mm -hmm. policies are. That's not exactly how Donald Trump puts it. And so in this sense, he's kind of shooting himself in the foot. He, his larger problem, though, is he's not running at the head of a unified party. And this is a problem that he's mm. been struggling with continually. And so before he can even begin to think about actually attracting the votes of minorities, he's going to have to try to put together that Republican coalition, which right now is uh, fracturing. No, Mickey, is there anything that Donald Trump can do to extend his reach with minorities at this point? No, absolutely not. And I think this is not about him extending his reach to minorities. I think it's about him thinking about what happens after this election. He's solidifying this alt-right community, bringing in media executives uh, to solidify them. And that is not a base of voters that's going to win him in the election. If he wanted to win this election, he'd be reaching out to women. He'd be reaching out to independents. He'd be talking well, about the economy. Is. I think he is. And the message with women that resonates is talking about the economy. And he's talking talking about jobs. He's talking about the economy. The economy. And Matthew, as far as there being a, a new conservatism, th this is something that you talk a lot about. What are you seeing on that front? Well, I think uh, that Trump's uh, move putting uh, Mr. Bannon, the, the CEO of Breitbart, uh, in charge of his campaign uh, as a chairman position. And I think um, he's definitely getting the support of a lot of these uh, online critics that are called the alt-right. They see this as their moment. And uh, however, <laughs> that, this association, Trump's not really for them, but they're for Trump. But it's given Hillary Clinton a great way to kind of drive a wedge mm -hmm. between Trump and those college-educated white voters that he, he needs to bring back into the Republican coalition if he has any hope of winning this election. All right. Mm -hmm. And those ads are out there. Nomiki, you saw the new Clinton ad, everything, new Trump ad, online ad, the real predators. Do you see those as effective? I think it is effective because it reinforces the message that the stakes are high in this election. And while there's massive voter registration and outreach and organization between the African American community and the Latino community, expanding to states like uh, Georgia and Arizona, which were never on the map mm. for Democrats, it's important that they remember the stakes are high. The choice is between a unified, big tent Democratic Party mm. and Donald Trump, who represents a very extreme right wing of the Republican Party. All right, we'll leave it there. Thank you to Thank both you. of you, uh, Matthew, Matthew and Nomiki.